back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we have a great show for you today. First topic we'll be going over is the recent, the recent gambling suspensions handed down by MLB and my overall thoughts on it. After that, we'll be going over the Astros' plan at the trade deadline, then going over, obviously, Al Garcia being DFA by the Marlins, Mark Fientos' great start to the season with the New York Mets, and the recent MLB Rookie of the Year poll. Now, before we do all that, I'd like to ask you to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read on the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. That has helped the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get into the show today. All right, so first topic, as I talked about, is going to be, of course, the gambling suspensions handed down by MLB today. I'd say that's the most, pretty, the most significant thing that is currently happening in MLB. Now, if you were watching the show yesterday... Uh, I believe during the second segment, this news broke that there were about to be some gambling suspensions in MOB around the next 24 hours. I talked about it because it was breaking news at that time, and I said I would probably have more on it the next day. Here we are. It is my leading topic, and let's get straight into it. So, the gambling suspensions are as follows. First off, we, of course, have the main victim and the main uh, perpetrator in this, I should say, Tusipito Marcano, who is an infielder for the San Diego Padres. He is now permanently ineligible for MLB. Basically, in other words, he's banned for life from the league. After that, we had four players also get suspended for one year. The A's, Michael Kelly, the Padres, Jay Groom, the Phillies, Jose Rodriguez, and the Diamondbacks, Andrew Saulfrank. Now, just going over the actual player impacts, none of these guys really have a big impact on their teams. Maracano is just depth for the Padres, came back after being a former top prospect for the organization and being involved in a Pirates trade at the deadline a few years ago for Adam Frazier. Not really a big deal. Jay Groom, not really anything for the Padres. Again, more depth. Jose Rodriguez, depth for the Phillies, and Andrew Saulfrank. Solid reliever depth for the Diamondbacks, honestly, but not really a big thing. The big one, I'd say, though, is Michael Kelly. Now, you may not know who that is, most likely, but he's actually been a big part of the A's bullpen this year, having a really solid season. The A's, of course, being having a surprising season because they are not historically awful like we expected. They're just regular bad, and the big thing for the A's really has been their bullpen this year with the resurgence of Mason Miller and also having guys like Lucas Eckerd there. You also now, of course, had Michael Kelly, who was a big part of that bullpen, pitching a good amount of innings for you, having a pretty solid ERA, but he will now be out for uh, a year of suspension. So that's kind of a big blow to the A's, I guess, if they were good, but they're not, so it doesn't really matter. So overall, uh, just my overall thoughts on this. I mean, I don't understand how people, professional athletes just still gamble. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I understand it's fun. I mean, I don't personally do it, but I know a lot of people do who do, and they have a lot of fun with it. It's a great thing. But when you are a professional athlete, you're giving up a privilege like this to be able to gamble. And especially, let's talk about Marcano's case. He gambled on his own team. He gambled on the Pirates uh, back when he was on the team, either last year or in 2022. Now, he was on the injured list when he gambled, but at the same time, he still gambled on your own team. You can't do that. That's just not okay, and that's not something you should do. I don't understand what he was thinking when he did that. I don't understand why he thought he wouldn't get caught. But I just, you know, I don't I don't understand what these players are thinking nowadays why you still gamble we've seen all the suspensions we've seen all um all this what happened throughout other leagues not it just mlb i mean nba we saw john Tay porter get banned for life nfl you had a lot of players get banned at the start of last year not for life but for a good amount of seasons i mean there were a bunch of lions players who got did that I'm not, nothing's really happened with hockey yet as far as i know but i'm sure something will in the near future we already saw what happened to ipe uh Ipe Muzahara, who is Shohei Atani's interpreter, today he was found guilty on all charges and is facing 33 years in prison. So it's not like we haven't had a gambling suspension already. Rock MLB or rock a different sport. I mean, hell, this sport had Pete Rose. So it's not exactly like it's a new thing. But at the same time, it just it baffles my mind how players still get spent for gambling and they still just gamble. I don't understand why they think they won't get caught. It's very perplexing to me and I, I just don't understand it. Another thing is we have to ask is, will this end up being a trend in baseball and just sports in general? I'd say yes. I do think that in the end, we are going to have more gambling expansions in the future. We're going to have a lot um, a lot more of these kind of events happening because gambling is so legalized now. It is such a big part of our culture. And a lot of people have the argument, well... You know, uh, they're making the joke of, oh, this, this, uh, we're learning about his suspension now. This program is brought to you by the DraftKings or something like that, saying how, you know, 
um, gambling is so just normalized today, why should MLB players be suspended for it? And I just don't agree with that. I just think it is it is impacting the integrity of the game. You cannot you cannot gamble on your your own team or the sport you play in. It's just you can't do that. I have no problem with gambling whatsoever. It's great. I mean, no one should. But at the same time, if you're a professional athlete, you understand what you you understand what privileges you give up in this league. I don't know about you guys. I'd not gamble to be to play in the MLB a hundred out of a hundred times. So it just doesn't make any sense to me, in my opinion, why these players keep doing these things and keep gambling, thinking they won't get caught. Now, Jake Room, apparently, who was one of the players who did get suspended, former top prospect with the Red Sox, who ended up getting traded to the Padres in that Eric Hosmer trade a few years ago, he actually placed the gambling, placed the bets that got him in trouble back in 2021. So he was very close to getting away with it, I'd say. But in the end, you're going to get caught. I mean, it's so easy with how how much collaboration is between these gambling companies and MLB players. So, yeah, um, not shocking news that players are getting suspended. But at the same time, I don't understand how they keep doing this. Now, the interesting thing for me is David Fletcher. He was apparently it was it's been known that he is under investigation by MLB for some gambling related things. Apparently he is caught up in the same things as Ipe, uh, Shohei former interpreter, of course, was with kind of the same bookmaker, but we don't really know what's happening with that, and he wasn't handed down a suspension yet, so either he was cleared of that, or it, they're still looking into that, and that's a different thing, so that could, that, could, uh, that could be an interesting case to follow, but there is one thing I do want to mention with these gambling suspensions and these things now. One of the things that people bring up, which I think is very valid, is how can players get suspended a year or so for gambling, yet we have other things like a domestic violence or breaking the law or something like that, and it's less lenient than, it's more lenient than what gambling suspension is. Now, I think I, I very much agree with this. I think when you look at a player like Marcelo Zuna, who I've talked about a lot on the podcast as being how great he's, he has done for the Braves this year, but this is a guy who... Um, has a domestic violence arrest, he has a drunk driving arrest, both in the span of a year, and he's still playing baseball and never really faced significant backlash or significant suspension from MLB. I think that's a fair that's a fair question to wonder, and it is something that I think needs to be um, I think needs to be addressed by MLB. I'm not saying players shouldn't get suspended for gambling. I think they absolutely should. I think you just cannot gamble on the sport you play as a professional athlete. You're in you're interrupting the integrity of the game, and I completely agree. But at the same time, when looking at suspensions for other more serious incidents, I don't understand how gambling takes um, a hold of it. Now, of course, we've seen players get domestic violence or you know um, other serious things and get high suspensions. I mean, the first one that comes to mind is Trevor Bauer, who definitely uh, deserved that, I'd say. I know that's a controversial topic, though, with uh, some people, but you know, you do see that as well, but I think that they are, they are giving them fair suspensions for, for gambling. It's just looking at other things that people do in MLB and the amount of discipline they face for it, it doesn't add up. And I think that is something MLB should do in the future, a little bit more lenient. No, not more lenient, um, a little less lenient, I should say. Sorry, I keep uh, messing that up. But overall, the question we're asking here now is, are we going to see more of this? And I talked about before, I think absolutely. I think with how much gambling is kind of integrated in our society at this point and how it has been legalized by Supreme Court and all that, I think in the end we are going to see a lot more of this and we are going to end up seeing a lot more players get caught, get suspended, and it's just going to be something that happens. I mean, we've already seen Pete Rose, which was a long, long time ago, be banned from the Hall of Fame and be banned for life from MLB for gambling. So it's not like this is a new thing. I don't understand why athletes think they'll get away with it. it kind of perplexes me and, uh, you know, doesn't really make much sense to me. But, hey, uh, it is what it is, and uh, I think we'll definitely see more of this future. I think it's only the start. So, yeah, that is our first segment here, talking about the gambling suspensions handed down by MLB recently, talking about Tusipito two, two Maracano's lifetime ban, which I definitely think was warranted. We're moving into our second segment, which is going to be talking about the Astros and their potential trade deadline activities. Uh, a quote by their general manager was interesting, and I want to talk about it. So yeah, we'll talk about that, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, and bye.